In previous lessons, I programmed this application, Launchpad. It lets me drag and drop files onto a form and click a button to launch the associated application or document. But when I close the Launchpad, the buttons are lost. So when I next load it up, the form's empty. How can I make sure that the buttons are reloaded whenever I start up the Launchpad? I'm Hugh. And in this lesson, I'll show you how to save details of all the buttons you've created on the launch pad and then reload them next time you start it up. First, though, there are a couple of things I've had to do in the Visual Studio Designer. First of all, I've added a file menu. That's done by adding a menu strip. Then I added a set of text items to the drop-down menu. I've also changed the flow panel a bit Previously, I set it to full dock, but that can interfere with the menu strip, causing the panel to overlap the menu if you're not very careful. And so it's easier, I thought, to set the dock to none, and then I dragged down the top of the panel to just under the menu strip. And having done that, I set the anchor property to top, bottom, left and right. That causes the panel to align itself with the form in a way that's well, it's broadly similar to full docking, but without the danger that it will dock itself over my menu strip. Now, let's see what these menu items do. I double-click Clear All to go to its click event handler. This just calls the clear method of the flow panel's controls property to remove the buttons, the buttons in the controls collection. So, how about saving the buttons? Let's take a look at that event handler. First, I use the path class to get the name of the directory that contains my program file. That's the executable file of the Launchpad application itself. You don't have to use that directory, but it seemed as good a place as any to me to store configuration details of the application, and I do that in a file called config.txt which I've appended to the path here. Then I call this function, save config. Now this function writes the path associated with each button. And remember, as I explained in the last lesson, I've stored the path in each button's tag property. Well, this writes that path onto a new line in my configuration text file. The StreamWriter class does all the hard work here. Now, I should say that there are lots of other ways that you could do this. You could create an XML file, for example, but a plain text file seems fine for this really quite simple task. So why overcomplicate things? Now, when I want to recreate the buttons, this method executes. It clears the existing buttons from the form, then it calls load config with the path to my config file. Load config reads the lines saved in that file, where each line is a path, and it populates a list of strings with those paths. Then for each path, it calls my add button method. That's the same method that's called when the user drags a file onto the form. So I haven't really had to write much new code to do all this. And that's, well, that's all there is to it. Oh, apart from one thing. The config file is automatically reloaded at startup in the form underscore load method, which is run when the program starts. Now, so far, I've put almost no error checking in my code because I wanted to keep this as simple as possible so you can see fairly easily exactly what's going on. Of course, in a finished application, you'd need to check that the config file exists before loading it and that the path to each file is valid when you click one of the buttons before you try to load or run the associated file. There's one other thing that would make this program much more useful too. At the moment, it can only save one group of buttons, but really, I'd like to be able to have multiple different groups. A set of buttons to load documents relating to my accounts, maybe, and another group that has all the files I need for my Latin or physics homework. And yet, one more with buttons to load up well, photos of my dogs. And so on. 
In other words, I need to be able to save and load more than one config file. I'll show you how to do that in the next lesson. To get a notification when I upload new videos, be sure to subscribe and click that little bell icon. And I'll see you again soon.